Hi again guys. Sorry, this is a bit annoying. I'm trying to get Nawa with me, but it's a bit like troublesome, so yeah. Hi, babe. Good morning, everyone. So on my end, it says that it's saying that Nara refused the call. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Choco Bleu. Okay, let me send an audio to Nara. Okay, we start again. I hope it's gonna work. Can you see me? I can see you. I can see you. I can see you. <sighs> My days. Hi. Hi, Rosanina. That's crazy. Some of you can see us, but I can't see. Oh, wait, let me try. That's crazy that I can't see her. Well, okay. I can't see her and I can't hear. Let's see. Crazy. Some of you can see us, but I can't see. Oh, yeah. So I tried wait, with, try... I tried with another account. Crazy that I can't see her. Wow, okay. I can't see her and I can't hear. Let's see. Crazy, some of you can see us, but I can't see. Okay, I tried with my other phone. Oh, yeah, so I tried with, I tried with another account. That's crazy that I can't see her. Wow, okay. I can't see her and I can't hear. Crazy, some of you can see us. Let's see. Okay, I tried with my other phone. Oh yeah, so I tried it with my, I tried with another account. That's crazy that I can't see her. Well, okay, I can't see her. Let's see. Let me see what you can see. Let's see. I can't see. Okay, I tried with my other phone. Oh yeah, so I tried it with my, I tried with another account. That's crazy that I can't see her. This is really okay. annoying. What's happening, Instagram? Well, in the meantime, I'm gonna answer your your questions. This is really annoying. What's happening, Instagram? Well, in the meantime, I'm gonna answer your. Tu préfères un moche ou un pauvre? Moche. Moche. Ouais, moche. Parce qu'une personne euh, pauvre, bah, je peux rien faire avec elle. Tu peux pas voyager, tu peux pas aller au restaurant. 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 Tu peux
chose. Bon, c'est pas important l'argent, c'est seulement important si on a des choses et à comment. Un pauvre moche. Un pauvre moche, oui. Pas de tout. C'est mignon, je crois que la pauvreté. Can you see me? No, I can't see you, but I can hear you. I can see you and I can hear you. Well, okay. Well, in that case, we're going to do the live like this because... Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But, but can everybody trying. see me? Okay, let me, let me try with my other phone. I'm going to tell you if I can see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, you left. No, I'm here. Well, oh yeah, now I can see you. You can see me with your other phone. Yes, with my other phone, I can see you. But you can't see me with this phone. No, no, no. So you can use your other phone to be looking at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can hear my voice. Yes, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, awesome. Okay, now I can't hear you, Nara. Okay, she left. Oh, okay. Now I can see you here. Really? Yes. I hope it doesn't go off. I hope that too. <laughs> okay. We'll so be how are you? for 30 minutes. Hi, Eunice. So how are you? I'm good. I'm happy. Okay. okay. How is Dubai? Dubai is amazing. Are you yeah. in Paris? Yes, I'm in Paris. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. I came to Paris last year. Oh, nice. Why do you yeah. think that everyone is moving to Dubai? Um, it's a multinational and the lifestyle. Yeah? The lifestyle is excellent. Okay. Yeah. And you know because in terms of in, what? In terms you know of what? digital age and everyone is wanting to post the most aesthetically pleasing content on social media. Okay. So right now, Dubai is just the location for that in terms of lifestyle. And mm -hmm. it's a multinational, it's accessible. So everyone truly really is moving to Dubai recently. Yes. Yes. Even French people, like, I see so many of them moving to Dubai. And I feel like, well, the, the one I'm checking, at least on social media, they say that their first choice was like London or L.A., and and then they discover Dubai and it's like equally as good and I feel like it's more affordable than those cities as well. Uh, I feel like Dubai is more. Like, London is also very expensive, but mm -hmm. I've never lived in London. But I feel like London is expensive. Yeah, and London is possibly crazy expensive. more expensive than Dubai. I think mm -hmm. more, London is more expensive than Dubai, but I like living here for a couple of reasons, and I also don't like living here for a couple of reasons. Okay. So I don't know if we're going to talk about that or if we're just going to dive into our topics. Yes, we we can talk about living up. So the reason why we are, we are having this live is because I wanted Nara to share with us her, her top tips to look put together. Like, what would you say to a beginner who's, who's starting to level up? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm reading the comments. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so there, there are just so many aspects in terms of leveling up. And I feel like the number one aspect in leveling up is spirituality. Yes. And that's being one with God. Because you can't fully know yourself mm -hmm. if you haven't come to know God. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And most of the time we're raised with a particular type of mindset 
and we are we grow up and we're, we're stuck on that mindset and with when you're working with god he, his own decision is to make you who he has decided for you to become okay so gradually you find out that you're changing you start understanding your purpose you start seeing who you could possibly become and most of the time you can't know all those things if you don't know god so the number one factor for me in terms of leveling up is your relationship with god because for me that's how i started leveling up okay. so i started leveling up that's when my relationship with god became firmer and my my what, what word will i use my interest the things i was interested in changed the things i like to watch the things i like to read the type mm -hmm. of people i wanted to be around Mm -hmm. and what else my dreams my goals everything changed to what god wanted for me okay you know so then that's number one thing is your spirituality then the second one is your mindset mm -hmm. so people have different types of mindset and the mindset that we have either causes us to progress mm -hmm. or regress Mm -hmm. So we find out that we're either having a mindset that makes life harder or we have a mindset that makes life better. Mm -hmm. And like I said, in terms of your spirituality, God changes your desires. God changes your ideas. God changes the things that you're interested in. So the people that you used to look up to, the people that you used to want to be around, mm -hmm. he will change them to people that will also affect your purpose, affect your destiny so okay. if you're hanging out with people that have a particular mindset they will influence you to think a certain way but if you're mm -hmm. hanging out around people who have a high value mindset who want who who think about progressive things who want to live a life of excellence who don't want to be mediocre mm -hmm. you start thinking like those people because yeah. they've influenced you so it now affects your mind. It now affects how you think. Then another thing is your perception of self. Mm -hmm. One thing that I notice people struggle in their... Sorry, I have cough. Sorry, guys. That's okay. <coughs> <coughs> One thing that um, people struggle in their leveling up journey is how they feel about themselves. A lot of women or a lot of people want more for themselves mm -hmm. but they don't think they deserve those things mm -hmm. so if you have low self-esteem mm -hmm. and you want to have better relationships or you want to have a better business or you want to have a better mm -hmm. partner if you love yourself you won't settle mm -hmm. if you love yourself you know exactly what you want you have your own mm -hmm. standards for your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then if you don't love yourself, you have low self-esteem, low self-worth, you keep mm -hmm. settling. Mm -hmm. When you keep settling, you won't make the best decisions for yourself. You won't attract the right people. Mm -hmm. And when you're not attracting the right people, it just affects your growth. It just affects mm -hmm. how you evolve as a person. Because for me, I believe that when you have the right relationships, they will propel you to evolve better. But then you, mm -hmm. you have the wrong relationships. Mm -hmm. They'll make you go down. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, when you have low self-worth, you don't have self-awareness. You can't tell that someone is not treating you the best that they can. Because even you yourself, you don't even believe that this is the best. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Then another thing in terms of leveling up is your appearance, which also has to do with your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. and um, also has to do with your perception of yourself. Mm -hmm. When you don't look good, you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. And when you don't feel good, you don't attract the best things in your life. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I went under the knife, and I, got a, I had a BBL in 2018. That's five years ago. And I wouldn't even say that after shortly after my bbl i became the most confident person but 
it also helped because when you look better, you feel better in your clothes. Mm -hmm. And then you carry your head high and you feel mm -hmm. much more confident in yourself. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I used to wear braces. My teeth wasn't always like straight and aligned. I used to have a lot of gaps and crooked teeth. So okay. the leveling up also has to do with your appearance. Mm -hmm. Some people don't feel confident because of how they look. Maybe they feel like they are too big or they are too skinny. And when you now decide that, okay, I want to look a certain way, when you now eventually start looking that way, you start to feel different. You start to feel confident. And for me, I've also understood is what you feel. Your feeling is your vibration. Your vibration is what you attract. So it still boils down to everything you are feeding yourself, your mindset, your oneness with God, how you look, how you carry yourself, your appearance, mm -hmm. and the things that you feed yourself, the people you surround yourself with help you evolve, help you level up, help you attract better, attract better relationships, attract opportunities, attract um, the right people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Yes. So to sum up, you say that to level up, you need to work with your spirit. Well, you need to improve your spirituality. So yes. for those who are religious, improve your relationship with God. And for those who are just spiritual, well, they call it what it, well, you call it what it is. The universe. Want. Some people call it yeah, the, the universe. universe. Yeah. The Some universe, people call it God. Spirit. Um, you higher self. Yeah. Your higher self. Exactly. And but just the, basically oneness with source oneness with a higher power whether you're yes. a christian or you're a muslim just oneness with source oneness yes. with something that controls you mm -hmm. yes but i also want to say that for people who aren't spiritual that's okay if this doesn't resonate so basically if you aren't spiritual the way you have to take it is just about being love and reconnecting yourself with with love basically the love that you have for yourself but also the love that you have for others and it's like a true decision that you take with yourself because at the end of the day like everything in life is about love so as long as you focus on it your life will improve anyway and mm -hmm. in really in in most religion like the um, and I, I think this is in christianity as well i'm not christian but um but i used to be and from what i remember like Love is the other name of God. So you see, as you connect yourself... Mm -hmm. God is love. With... Yeah, exactly. God is love. And yeah, so even if you aren't spiritual or re religious, but if you just if you just tell yourself that you you want to experience love, not just, you know, in terms of um, romance, right, with a partner, but just, you know, love with a big L, you're going to feel better about yourself. You, your life going to be more beautiful as well and also what i would suggest is like you need to be with people who think like you who think that love is the mm -hmm. most important thing ever mm -hmm. and as you change your mindset and you truly focus on that you will see that you're gonna attract better people in your life the women you're gonna yeah. attract in your life will be amazing the men you're gonna start to date will be amazing as well everything is about love and i can't think of a moment where my life didn't become more beautiful when I decided that I want my entire life to be based on love. So yeah, yeah. this would be like my biggest advice. So, so yeah. And then the another, mindset. Yeah. Another thing is that a lot of people have limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And when you have limiting beliefs, you're limited. That's why it's called limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So you feel like, oh, you're not worthy of certain positions you're not worthy of being in certain circles or certain places. And if you have those limiting beliefs, you, it will keep hindering you from manifesting mm -hmm. a better life or a better version of yourself. So one thing that you can do to rewire your limiting beliefs is affirmations. Mm -hmm. You affirm yourself with affirmations that make you feel good about mm -hmm. yourself, that make you feel like you are deserving and worthy of certain things in life like years ago i wouldn't be able to come on live because i didn't feel like oh what would i have something to say 
what like what would i what would i say that would add value to people but because i had a limiting belief that told me that there's something in me that is not worthy for the public or it's not worthy for people to hear but because i've been working on myself feeding myself information that makes me feel good about myself mm -hmm. and then it boosts my confidence it boosts mm -hmm. my self-esteem i have better beliefs about myself mm -hmm. but the thing is that a lot of people don't want to do the work all of these things take time and mm -hmm. it's like people don't people are not patient mm -hmm. doing the work on yourself leveling up it takes consistency it takes intentionality you have to be mm -hmm. intentional every single mm -hmm. day you keep showing up you keep trying like you're gonna make mistakes everyone no one is perfect you're gonna do things that doesn't align with the person you are trying to become which is the best version of yourself but that doesn't mean you stop along the way you keep trying regardless yes 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 and regarding the mindset and the limiting belief that we have in many cases, like some people work on themselves and they think, yeah, I'm okay. Until like something happens, they, they don't manifest what they want. And then exactly. they understand something and then boom, they realize that, oh, actually my self-esteem isn't that high. And actually I do have limiting beliefs. And I want you to know that this is normal and this is part of life. Actually, like you're going to understand the limiting beliefs that you have at the right time. And the minute you understand them, it's also when you start to heal them. So mm -hmm. be patient with yourself mm -hmm. and still stay open, like keep on investing in yourself. And yes. also what I, what I find works with me, what has worked for me at least is like when I talk with others who are also working on themselves and I, and I discovered the, the limiting beliefs that they had. In, in some cases, I relate to that and I'm like, damn, this is true. I actually think like that as well. And this is a limiting belief that I also had, and then I clear it. So yeah, stay open, keep on investing in yourself. And forgive yourself when you make mm -hmm. mistakes or when you realize that you're not doing things that you should be doing. Mm -hmm. don't, be so, don't be so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. You learn from the mistakes, you pick yourself mm -hmm. back up and you keep going, you keep, mm -hmm. you keep trying, you keep trying to make progress. That's another mm -hmm. thing that we struggle. And mm -hmm. the things that when I say we have to be one with God, this is where it mm -hmm. applies because God even forgives us faster than we forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we, when we make mistakes, we struggle to forgive ourselves. We are hard on ourselves. We keep telling ourselves all these things. Oh, you're silly. How could you have done that? How could you have? And then this, and then you you struggle to now start the process again. But the thing about mm -hmm. with growth with your evolution it's a non-stop journey as mm -hmm. long as you are alive you have to keep striving to be a better mm -hmm. person to be the best version of yourself mm -hmm. i understand somebody said sometimes when i remember my past mistakes it brings my self-confidence down <coughs> i understand but just don't dwell on it reflect it's good to reflect on the things that mm -hmm. you've done yeah and then when and you reflect you'll pick pick the lessons Yes, when exactly. People make, making the same mistake, it becomes a pattern. Mm -hmm. So you pick the lessons. Why? Why? What makes me behave this way, or what makes me keep doing this same thing over and over and over again? So you have to be honest with yourself. Sorry, I'm coughing. <laughs> yes. So what I wanted to say is that those mistakes are part of your journey, and you had to make those mistakes to to be able to Learn. be the person that you are now. So it's completely normal to make them. And we, also, we all make mistakes. And also, like, what you have to do is, like, you need to, to detach yourself from that person because, like, spirit is, your, spirit is perf your, your spirit is perfect. Your higher self is perfect. You see, it's the ego that judges. It's the ego that thinks that you aren't good enough. But you need to detach yourself from that and just need to observe the, the experiences that you're having and the lessons that you're having. You see, because spirit is perfect and it wants the best for you. So exactly. you just go through all of those mistakes and and all of that. But that's part of the journey. And it's for you to learn and also to teach others. Exactly. Like, that's exactly why you go through these things. Because your, your destiny is tied to other people. Mm -hmm. So you don't just go through certain things just for yourself. You go through it mm -hmm. for other people to help other people. Because in the grand scheme of things, we are all one. Mm -hmm. we are all exactly. one with each other but because of the way society makes you feel like oh 
one person is just by themselves and well no we're all one whatever yes. we do has a ripple effect on the entire on the entire world i so, agree yeah. i agree and it's the ego that that's it's the ego that sees the separation between people exactly ego is separation. You yourself, yeah when you connect yourself with your higher self it's only oneness it's only love and it's only peace so yeah exactly so yeah. next question I want to talk actually about, you know, the concrete things you do to look put together, like physically. I'm not talking about, well, we talked about the mindset and all of that, but now I want to talk about, you know, the actual thing, how you dress, okay. um, how you create outfits that work and all of that. Okay, so I, I need to go back to my history. I went to a university in Nigeria called Convenant University, mm -hmm. and it was a private university. And we used to wear only corporate um, outfits, like corporate okay. shirts and skirts and knee-length dresses. And typically, if you're going to a federal university in Nigeria, you can wear jeans, you can wear crop tops, tank tops, all those things. But I, like because of the university that I went to, that also shaped my style from when... I was younger because if you look at my my pictures from when you look at my pictures from like 2009 2008 i had the way i dress is still the way i used to dress years ago so my university just helped in my my fashion sense okay so in terms of how i how i choose my outfits and how i try to look put together in terms mm -hmm. of my appearance my makeup mm -hmm. i like uh, i'm a makeup artist by the way i've been a makeup artist for almost 10 years Nice. And my makeup style is minimal, effortless, sophisticated, because I feel like that mm -hmm. makes you look classy. I feel like mm -hmm. less is more. When you have mm -hmm. little makeup, it just shows your own natural beauty. But for me, I've also understood that the women who like loads of makeup are very insecure because mm -hmm. they feel like the makeup will make them look finer. But the women who are very confident in their skin, they like less makeup. But the thing is that with less makeup, less makeup makes you look more sophisticated, makes you look more youthful. Mm -hmm. You know, like little to no, like not heavy contour, not heavy blush, not heavy eyeshadow, soft lashes, mm -hmm. soft eyebrows. Like right now, I don't even have foundation on. I just have eyeliner, lip gloss, and I did my brows because obviously it's just live. But when I'm going out, I'll have like foundation, blush, little bit of highlighter and nothing too i feel like i already have a very i already have striking features mm -hmm. and if i have too much makeup on it's just going to distract mm -hmm. distract my the person whoever is looking at me from my actual beauty mm -hmm. so for me less is more when it comes to your makeup and then mm -hmm. for your jewelry i also have the same notion like less is more i don't like over the top jewelry very minimal costume jewelry, a, a pendant or a necklace, dropping earrings, something soft and light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of my clothes, I noticed that recently I like to wear dresses below my knee. I don't. I feel like it looks more elegant when you wear dresses below your knee, mm -hmm. and then when you're wearing mini dresses, it just mm -hmm. looks um, a bit like revealing so i rather wear a dress that shows a little bit of cleavage and covers my knee and my my legs than okay. to wear a dress that shows my cleavage and shows my leg at the same time i just feel like okay. i'm already revealing too much in terms of my fashion sense okay. so i i just go for classics basically my style is very classic i don't like um I don't like um, logo brands like wearing like Fendi, Fendi, Fendi or Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. No, and for me, I don't think that that is elegant. I don't wear a lot of colors. If you notice on my page, most of the time I'm wearing black. Okay. You know, I don't wear loads of colors. I just wear colors that make me look. If I'm wearing colors, it makes me feel very feminine, mm -hmm. you know. So that's about it. And then my hairstyle is also minimal. I've been on my natural hair since January. I haven't, 
I have hair extensions that I can just clip in my scalp and I take it off when I'm done. And I have loads of wigs, like 20 wigs that I haven't worn since last year. Like I'm done with wigs for now because I'm going for a more natural, sophisticated look as I'm getting older. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just a less is more type of lady. I don't, I don't, I'm a pleated skirt, um, palazzo pants. I don't do a lot of trendy fashion styles. My fashion icon is Meghan Markle. I think she's one of the most elegant women on the planet. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I try to stick with, classics a classic t-shirt i love silk i don't know if you've noticed i I wear a lot of silk i love silk dresses because i feel like they are timeless and it just feels soft on my skin Mm -hmm. so yeah that's about it and the truth is that with fashion it's how you dress that you will be addressed Mm -hmm. you know so when you are when you're dressed shabbily and you're wearing too many logos no shade to anyone who likes rappers, but that's how you start to look like a rapper or a rapper's girlfriend with a uh, massive um, um, pendant that they wear. That's not my style. I don't do all them um, jumps, cat suits. Even when I'm wearing a cat suit, I, I still make it look as minimal as possible i don't Mm -hmm. like if i'm wearing a pendant or a necklace a tennis bracelet it has to be Mm -hmm. something that just doesn't show too much of my neckline or i'm not wearing a turtleneck with with a necklace if i'm wearing a turtleneck i'm packing my hair back or my hair isn't on my body and my earrings are just not dropping on my body they're just hanging up here nothing serious so that's about it when it comes to my fashion and dress elegant you attract quality people Mm -hmm. and i want to ask you what advice would you give to a woman who is new to leveling up and she wants to know know how to make herself look pretty and yeah so what would you say to a beginner who tries to level up physically so what you eat and Mm -hmm. then what you eat is going to either make you skinnier or make you bigger it depends on mm-hmm. how you look there are people who are very big and they're still very confident mm-hmm. but then i also feel like when you're confident in your skin it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you're a plus size as long as mm-hmm. you're confident in your skin and you're wearing the right clothes but the number one thing for me is your hygiene when it comes to leveling up so a cat suit would be like you know um something that is like um top and bottom at the same time so it's like a combination like a dress but with with pants yeah exactly and i want to say about that that it it can look fine if you have you know a petite frame and you don't have too much curves but when you have like a lot of curves it can a lot of curves it can become you know a little bit vulgar so it can become a little bit burger, but it depends on the type of cat suit that you wear. Like, I have a cat suit video on my profile. So, if you can check my profile, you see my OOTD. I'm wearing a cat suit, but I'm wearing it with, with platforms and little jewelry. Very minimal. I don't have too much going on. Straight black hair, and that's about it. The shoes I was even wearing with my cat suit, that's not even the shoes I ended up wearing to go out because those ones the shoes i wear they look like stripper shoes and then when i when i was about to go out i didn't feel like myself like i'm very in tune with my style Mm -hmm. you know so when i'm going out or when i'm dressing up and something doesn't look as effortless and classy as i need it to be i'm just going to Mm -hmm. drop it yes exactly i think like if when you look at so this is the tip that i would give a beginner if when you look at yourself you don't think wow then it means that something is missing. Yeah. And you need to either change your outfit or optimize something. But yeah, you need to yeah. think wow. Or minimize the something. amount of things yeah. you're wearing. Exactly. I would I would say that like you soul knows when your outfit was good or not. Like mm-hmm. every time I've dated an outfit, I saw, I wore it, then I took a picture and then I asked a friend, Yeah, what do you think of this outfit? She said, Yeah, 
this is wrong she she was able she was able to to spot the mistakes and yeah. and yeah i'm i always tell myself that if i'm not 100% sure when i look at myself it means that there is something off in my mm-hmm. outfit mm-hmm. exactly exactly so i mean yeah for me just being elegant appearing sophisticated mm-hmm. it has to do with the type of fabrics that you're wearing the mm-hmm. type of colors that yes. you're wearing as well like there are some colors that i wouldn't be caught dead <laughs> wearing mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it doesn't scream class it doesn't scream yes. sophistication you yes. know so if yes. you're looking for style um elegant women who have very classy style i always check pinterest so if i'm mm-hmm. thinking of okay, how am i going to style a blazer or how am i going to style a pleated skirt i will just check pinterest and i'll see style ideas but i'm going to make i'm for my youtube channel now i'm going to start making videos on how to style certain things that make you look elegant like how to style pleated skirts how to style a blazer you know things like that let me write that down <laughs> So yeah. Okay, so I'm so getting some one thing for a woman. So yeah, basically your hygiene and the things that you are feeding yourself when you're when you're about to start your level level up journey, mm-hmm. the things you feed yourself is so mm-hmm. crucial. Yes, I like, agree. I I I I don't spend a lot of time on blogs because. And I also don't watch Netflix, which is so mm-hmm. surprising. <laughs> like the last series that I watched on Netflix, after the first episode, I was like, what is this? It didn't make any sense to me. No shade to anyone that watches Netflix. So it's good to watch movies. But I like to watch things that inspire me, mm-hmm. things that teach me, things that enlighten me, mm-hmm. you know? Because at the end of the day, why students of life, you need to keep prepare you to keep learning every now and then it's good to unwind good to watch a movie you know when you want to find out what's happening in the world you can go and check on a blog but if you're mm-hmm. going on a blog every single day reading mm-hmm. the comments every single day gossiping with people every mm-hmm. single day you the time that you're supposed to add value to your life and make mm-hmm. yourself a better person you're wasting it on things that have no importance to you mm-hmm you know so basically things you watch you feed yourself you read books you read self help books books that will teach you on different things it's very important but because when this digital age we are so distracted we're always on social media and it's not easy like for me to read a book i have to turn off my phone that's how extreme i have to go for me to be able to read a book and i need you need to go for knowledge we can't be living in ignorance we can't be ignorant mm-hmm. we need to mm-hmm. be able to know because what if you don't know certain things you can't access certain levels in life because you don't know you're not prepared for that level because you don't have the requisite knowledge for that level yes so you have to keep feeding your mind you have to work on your hygiene you have to use good skin care products you have to use good hair care products you have to look put together do your hair get your nails done i don't normally if I'm go if I find out that I have plenty of events, I usually fix my nails, but now I'm not fixing my nails. You do nails that are very classy and effortless. Mm-hmm. I don't I, I, I no shade to anyone who likes long nails, but that's not my, my style. I like elegant, classy nails. If you're looking for nail ideas, you can check my highlights on my Instagram. I have a highlight for my nails, I have a highlights for my OOTD, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, do you guys have any questions? Actually, I have some questions here about, you know, um boundaries and all of that. So, I want to answer now and I will make a longer video on that on YouTube. So, basically, one of you is asking me how to not get emotional every time someone hurts you or insults you. It's completely it's completely okay for you to be emotional and feel hurt. When someone hurts you because they aren't supposed to insult you and hurt you. 
So mm -hmm. you need to communicate your boundaries. And also what you need to know is that this is not normal and it's okay for you to remove yourself from that environment. You see, if they are mean to you, they insult you, then they aren't respectful and you have nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I also feel like if someone hurts you, you need to be able to speak up over something that you don't like. Because a lot of people just overlook things because they want mm -hmm. to save their relationship. But yes. when someone hurts you, speak up. Don't, talk, don't throw tantrums. There's something called EQ. EQ is called emotional intelligence. So you use, you, you need to train your emotional intelligence so you're not, okay, lashing out at someone when they mistreat you or crying, but you have the right delivery and you can speak your mind and tell the person, okay, this, is, this doesn't sit well with me. And then you keep it moving. Yes. If the person keeps doing things to hurt you, then that's a sign that the person doesn't value you. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't have people in your life that don't value you. Yes, exactly. Okay, ladies. So, well, do you have anything else to ask? Ladies, do you have other questions? I believe someone asked you, Nara, what you were reading. What book are you reading? Currently? Yes. I'm currently reading a book on my purpose. I'm trying to understand... I feel like I have an idea of my purpose, like trying to connect the dots of why I went through what I went through in the past and okay. what it has to do with my future and the rest okay. of my life. Okay. Because nice. a lot of people don't know why they are here. So they are lost. Too many people are lost. And you can never truly know who you are if you don't try to find out. It's not by speculation. It's by going for knowledge like i always say i'm very big on going for knowledge i am a knowledge hungry woman i like yeah. to know things so nice. let me let me show you a picture of the book i'm reading what are you guys reading leave a comment to let me know so this is the book that i'm reading is by miles monroe it's called in pursuit okay. of purpose okay, and nice. just just the first chapters that i'm reading first pages that i'm reading is already making me ask myself certain questions nice, you know. nice so nice, you need nice. to yeah try to read books it's not easy but you just have to try it with one chapter a day so somebody said please can you talk about body dysmorphia body dysmorphia is a real thing and sometimes it feels like it never stops because maybe your weight is fluctuating or you have like for me i have stretch marks on my body and most of the time it doesn't affect me like before it used to affect me because i was living in a place where people used to make fun of my stretch marks so it made me insecure but now i don't really care about it unless you know maybe I, I dress up and I look very classy. I look very sophisticated and I look at my skin and I can see the stretch marks and I tell myself, okay, I'm going to work on the stretch marks, but I don't, I don't dwell too much on the stretch marks anymore because it's part of me. It's, it's just, everyone has stretch marks. So in terms of body dysmorphia, when you love your entire being, mm -hmm. it's very easy to embrace how you look like, you know, and this is something that people struggle with, loving how they look. Why don't you love the way you look? Maybe because you feel like maybe your nose is too big or your body is too big. If you feel like your body is too big and you want to go on that night or you want to start eating healthy or you want to start working out, these are steps you can take to actually start looking better and feeling better about your body. Yes, yes. And what I, there is something that I wanted to add about stretch marks. I, I have them as well. And even if I hadn't, even if I didn't have them, like I have other things that I'm not a big fan of on my body. Yeah. But like, as I started to make peace with my stretch marks. And now I tell myself that it's normal for my skin to, to, to have evolved, right? Because, you know, it's like when you, when you were a child, you were trying to ride the bike, then you fell off. And then now you have a lot of, scars on your knees mm -hmm. and maybe like when you were 
uh, when you were a teenager, you catch yourself a little bit and you have scars on your arms and all of that. That's mm -hmm. just, you know, it just means that you have lived mm -hmm. and that's it. And this is how I take it now. It's just like, yeah, I mean, I'm 29, so it's normal to have stretch marks, scars and all mm -hmm. of Me that. Too. But I have lived. Mm -hmm. you know? It's what but, makes us human. Yes, exactly. And because also what I want the, to the add. The thing is that social media has made it seem like everyone is perfect online. Yes, that's true. No one is perfect. No one is as perfect as they make their pictures or their videos look. Everything is edited. Mm -hmm. Even the most, how do I explain it? Everybody that looks so perfect, it either tries mm -hmm. to work on themselves, they have enough money to fix themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you need to look a particular way offline, you can always mm -hmm. put in the work to work out, to go under the knife, or to start mm -hmm. eating healthy. But just get rid of the, the ideology that everyone is perfect and then there's something wrong with you. Most people edit their pictures and they are very good in the editing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they make it look natural and all of that. Yeah, and so, then yeah. you now start thinking that, oh, then there's something wrong with you because you don't look like an IG body. Mm -hmm. no yes and what i would say is like try to stay off of social media like if you like social media this much i think the best one might be youtube because you see you see people you know na they're more natural at least and although that's true that with the with great lighting you mm -hmm. look better and all of that but i think that at least with youtube we aren't so focused on how people look we are more focused on what they have to say and their mind Mm -hmm. so so yeah this is my my favorite social media because i know that on instagram it's a lot about you know appearance and sometimes i catch my i catch myself judging people you know on on instagram whereas it's not the person first of all it's not the person that i want to be but just like something that your brand does because you know with pictures we are focused on the image and we start to think we start to look at the things that we don't like too much and you become judgmental mm -hmm. you ask yourself how oh, um, I wonder what's her job, like, how come she travels all the time, and you start to, you know, I, be I wish people to understand that social media, I know we always say that social media is not real. Yes. But it's like we forget, especially when we're scrolling mm -hmm. for too long, we forget that yes. it's not real. Like, yes, it has such a, it has such a, for me, it's like, it has a, positive and negative effect on us a lot mm -hmm. of things that i i learn about life a lot of things that help me grow i learn mm -hmm. from the accounts that i follow on social media like your account teaches us how to be high value mm -hmm. so those are the positives of social media but then we're human beings you see another person living a life you want to live in quotes mm -hmm. and then you, you, you feel like, okay, that's the life I want to live. And then you start comparing their own reality that they are showing you mm -hmm. and start comparing it to your own actual reality. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, how do you know that their reality of social media is the reality that they are showing you? Mm -hmm. And then we end up with that vicious cycle of comparing, oh, this is mm -hmm. not happening. This is not doing this. Mm -hmm. This is not doing that. I was telling myself the other day that if everyone is traveling and living their best life. Who is saving? Who is saving their money? Because it seems like everyone is living their best life these days. Some people travel every other month or every month. They're in a, they're in a different city. And it's like, when do you even have time to work, to make the money, to travel, to live their life? And this then you think true. about it, it doesn't even add up. So people this just true. want to, like, there's no pressure and I wish we, we would all just take that pressure off ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, st spend less time offline. Like, for me now, for me to be able to be in the moment, I have to turn off my phone. I don't care who's mm -hmm. going to call me, but it's like, instead of us con controlling social media, social media is beginning to control us. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, any more questions? Okay. Um, do you guys have other questions? Because I need to go actually. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I need to go and pray for my life. <laughs>
Well, then maybe we can we can do another live later on. Yeah, hopefully I... the network is favor favorable to us. Yes. Thank God we didn't give up. Yes, yes. I think like we were being tested a little bit, but we, yeah. we met. <laughs> okay, now I've never you. been in love. Yes, I have at this point. I think I can only just be in love with my myself <laughs> for now. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for showing up. Do you think it's a bad thing to go under the knife as a Christian? No, it's not a bad thing. It's just like saying, do you think it's a bad thing to use makeup? No. It's not a bad thing. Do you think it's a bad thing to fix your teeth? No, it's not a bad thing to, to alter your appearance. If it was a bad thing, God wouldn't have granted your surgeon the skill to be able to do, to do the surgery, right? Exactly. So it's not a bad thing. I think I'm going to continue the live on my page. <laughs> because okay, that's my fine. followers, they like to talk. <laughs> okay. You can see my own followers asking questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guys, okay, thank, guys you. thank you so much. Bye. Bye.